And the way I like to remember to do it is go with the right hand working end and we're going to take our right hand end over our left and up through that loop we just created from behind and then we're going to take our left hand working end over our right hand working end and up through that loop we just created. Simple as that, we have our square knot. You'll see it looks like two loops basically coiled over or cinching together onto each other. Just the reverse when you turn it over. Show you that once more. So with a rope we're always going to remember to start with the right hand side and go over the left up through the loop we just created. And then, oh, sorry. And then left over right up through the loop we just created. Pull tight and that's your square knot. This is going to be your standing end on the right and our working end on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this up off the bench so it's a little easier for you to see. So you can see I've just made a loop there and my working end has come across and underneath the standing part of the rope. Make sure you leave yourself enough slack here, plenty of slack so that uh, you've got enough to work with. So we're going to take our working end and we're going to come up and over and down through that loop we just made. So you should now have one coil around your standing rope with your working end. And I'm going to pull this fairly tight because I find it, it keeps things a little easier at the end if you keep the, the coils quite tight. So one coil, I'm going to bring our working end up and down through the loop again to make a second coil. So this is what you should have. It should look like that. Two coils around your standing rope with your working end. A little hard to keep everything together but persevere. And this is obviously the knot that's going to slide up and down our working or standing rope. Um, sorry, our standing end. Uh, take your working end and we're now going to bring this, instead of up and down through, we're going to bring it down below the two coils we just made. So you're making a D shape there. You can see, capital D. And once you brought it underneath your standing rope, you're going to bring it back up over and down through that D loop that you just made. And that's going to be our last coil around our standing rope. Pull that through there and then you just want to try and squeeze that up. You're basically trying to make this the third coil. So there was the first one, second one and now third one. Pull that together and then give a little pull on these ends, not, not too severe. Um, and just pull out your working end, try and squish everything together. And you should end up with a lump that looks something like that. It's maybe not the prettiest of knots, but if you squeeze it all together you should have three coils fairly neatly. And you'll see the three coils now slide freely on what was originally our standing rope. To make a simple cow's hitch, you're just going to bend your rope in half and put it behind, make, take this loop and put it behind the object you want to put the hitch onto. And bring the loop back over the object towards you so it's on top. Reach through the loop and grab your two working ends and pull them up through and cinch that down. It's so a really strong hitch provided you have an equal force pulling on both of your working ends or these are both tethered to something. If they're not both tethered you'll find that the cow's hitch can tend to pull out. So if we, if we waggle on this end here you can see the other one quite easily uh, begins to feed through and eventually would pull out. So to rectify that if you have a load just on one of these strands uh, you can actually secure the hitch and make it much stronger so it won't pull out. So let's just slacken it off slightly. And we're going to take our working end here and we're just going to pass this behind this strand on the right. And we're going to bring it over the top of the two middle strands and lastly behind the strand on the left. Push that through. Okay, so you have something that looks like that. And then you're just going to pull everything tight. So pull this end through, pull your working end out. And now you can put as much load as you need on this working end without any danger of this pulling out because it's secured here and the harder you pull the tighter that hitch will get but it's still pretty easily um, undoable so let me just show you the front and back the front view and the First back thing we want to do with our working end is bring that back around to form a loop and we're going to form a loop so that our working end is now underneath our main strand so you can see it's underneath there all we're going to do is take our working end back over the main strand, like so, and then we're going to bring it up through this loop here. So I'm going to reach through there and grab the working end. Now, as I pull this tight, you should start to see that form into a figure eight shape. 
and that is your figure eight knot. You can see it's nicely symmetrical. It's actually quite a cool looking knot, quite decorative, uh, but it is very functional. You can see that's going to stop anything sliding off the rope and it's keeping this end preserved. So, let's do that one more time. We're going to take the <coughs> excuse me, take the working end of our rope and we're going to bring that back in itself to create a loop. And our working end is underneath our main strand. I'm going to bring that working end back over the main strand and up through this loop here. And as I pull that together, you should start to see that form into figure eight. And there you the easiest way to practice is to lay out your rope kind of in a fish hook shape, coming around this way counterclockwise so your short end is on the right hand side. And all we're going to do is basically make a loop here in our rope. So you're going to pick up your working end, take that round counterclockwise over our main strand and back around roughly to the position where you started. So you can see we have the loop that comes under, round and over itself. And if you do it that way and always think of taking it over counterclockwise with your hand, you'll always end up with this loop going the right way to make the rest of your bowline. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this up off the table. We're going to take our working end and we're going to go underneath and up through that loop we just made. Okay, so you should have something that looks like that. We're then going to take our working end around the back of our main strand here, like so, and then down through this loop in the middle, okay? So down through that top loop. Hang on to that end there, and we just want to pull through here, pull everything tight, and that's our bowline. I've left that quite loose, I haven't cinched it up so that we can see how it looks. So you can see your working end basically creates kind of a halter around your main strand and you have a loop coming around the front of it. The reverse should look like this. Okay, so let's just lay that out and do it once more time. So we start with our fish hook shape. Take your working end and go counterclockwise over the top of the main strand and back around to where you started. You're then going to take your working end up through that loop round the back of your main strand and down through this top loop in the middle and then we're just going to cinch everything tight and that's your bowline knot